today we're talking about one of my favourite books, Jane Eyre. And not only is it one of my favourite books, it's a classic which I take to mean it's a ton of people's one of their favourite books. Yay! It completely deserves to be so. Hello everyone! My name is Azra, I love to read and I love to talk about what I've read. So, you can probably see how many times I've read this book from the bajillion post-it notes around here. Um, and let's, let's just dive in to them. This is seen as a masterpiece of feminist literature. However, it does have its problems and books are like people. You have to acknowledge the good and the bad. So today we're going to start with the bad, specifically the myth of the bad woman, as we see it in Jane Eyre. And we're going to do this through three characters. Celine Varenz, Miss Rochester's former mistress. Bertha Rochester, his former wife. And Blanche Ingram, his almost wife. So first, let's, let's look at how these people are described. So we get a description for Bertha Rochester, or Bertha Mason, as she was known before she was married, and uh, Blanche Ingram at the same time. Miss Mason was the boast of the Spanish town for her beauty, and this was no lie. I found her a fine woman in the style of Blanche Ingram, tall, dark, and majestic. Okay, so let's just pause there and acknowledge what Mr. Rochester is saying. So basically, he's equating being beautiful and darkly beautiful with being bad. Now if this was one character then we could say that it's a coincidence but while Jane is plain little and plain and Quakerish as he says at one point all of the other women he falls for including Celine Lorenz are mysteriously very beautiful and described in a very perfumed manner. going to take Celine Varens' description as what we have for Adele's description since Jane and Rochester both say that they find no trace of Rochester in Adele let's just assume that Celine Varens looks like Adele which is you know basically like Blanche Ingram they're tall they're dark two of these women are foreign all these three women probably the most has been written about Bertha Rochester and with a good cause there is an entire book from her perspective Wide Sargasso Sea which personally I have not read but it has been on my to be read list for ever and I'm not going to devote most of this video to that just because so much has already been said so we get most of what Jane thinks about Celine over Adele so Jane is talking about Adele getting bad things from Celine if that makes sense she says she lets Adele sit on her lap and play and she doesn't even rebuke her, not rebuking even some little freedoms and trivialities into which she was apt to stray when much noticed, and which betrayed her a superficiality of character, inherited probably from her mother, hardly congenial to an English mind. Mm, um, okay, so... Adele has some bad habits, apparently, which betray her superficiality of character, and Jane immediately assumes that they have to come from her French mother. Let's see what she has to say at the end of the book. As she grew up, a sound English education corrected in a great measure her French defects. But that doesn't exactly sit right with me for a couple of reasons. It's not accurate at all to say that some defects are just born of a country. It doesn't work like that. Blanche Ingram was English and Jane accused her of being just as superficial as Adele. Bertha Rochester, we already know, is being treated abominably. Yes, at the time she might have been better off than being at an asylum. It's still not a good idea to lock someone up in an attic and hope for the best. Even if she wasn't mentally disturbed when she went into that attic, she probably would be after a couple of months in there. The problem I have with this, like, bad woman thing is that you could easily write Jane Eyre from any one of these people's perspectives. You could, in fact, I haven't talked about Adele much here, but you could write Jane Eyre from Adele's perspective and I think that would be an amazing book. Jane is righteous. That's fine. She has her own moral compass. 
but all of these other people have things that they're thinking about as well. Blanche wants to marry someone who's rich. Okay, well, at that time, marriage was an economic proposition. Sometimes it still is. When a woman got married, that meant a lot more than just, I love you, let's spend the rest of our life together. It also meant, okay, now you will have the right to handle all of my property. And Blanche is doing what society expects of her at that point, so maybe instead of being critical of Blanche Ingram, we could be critical of the position that she's in. Because we have no problem criticizing the position that Jane's in. Bertha Mason, you're being brought from Jamaica, so far away, to England, and suddenly find yourself locked in an attic. Celine Varenz. Rochester is adamant that Adele is not his child. Odds are, she is. And having never even met Celine, and only having Rochester's word for her actions, how can you accuse Adele of taking them on? Just because Jane and Rochester love each other, it doesn't make any other woman who's been in his life before or hasn't even actually been in his life, <coughs> Blanche Ingram, some kind of evil villain. It's time to, you know, slowly give up, or maybe not so slowly, give up this idea of the bad woman. Just like the book, each of those women has good parts and bad parts. And in the end, it's really important to acknowledge all of that. Ben Johnson said in a poem about Shakespeare that he was not for one age, but for all ages. Well, I think that with Jane Eyre and with classics in general, they're both for an age and for all ages. So while, yes, this kind of thinking was prevalent in the time that Jane Eyre was written, this is still something that we have to be talking about today. Because just characterizing other women as the bad woman isn't going to make your problems go away, and it's definitely not going to make society more friendly to you. Jane Eyre is one of my favorite books because it gives Jane a voice. The reason that I love Jane Eyre and not, say, Pride and Prejudice is because it literally gives her a voice. There is pages and pages of conversation between Rochester and Jane. And you, you get her actually saying things. It's not just she's standing up for herself in her actions, which she definitely is. We get to hear her vocalizing um, those actions. And she has a strong moral compass that she sticks to. The world that she lives in isn't exactly kind to her. She wasn't born into great circumstances but she makes a way for herself and she refuses to compromise her moral ground. That is incredibly inspiring to me, still. And the ending. Jane and Rochester don't get together while Jane is in Rochester's employ. When Rochester has the upper hand, they get together not even when they're equal, but when Rochester's house is burnt down, he's lost a hand and an eye, and Jane is in a position to support herself financially. And honestly, I don't think that they could have been happy if they got married before Jane was able to support herself, before she was truly free, because then you're not really choosing to spend your life with someone. Maybe that's what makes it so, so romantic for me.